we're in spawning the top right it is striker as the blue zerg and in the bottom right in that sexy pink color it is ghost dark as the protoss and uh yeah i mean ghost dark I'm curious to see what he's going to do. Last game we saw Gateway expand from Oyaji, but uh, so far the South American Protosses, which, you know, we've basically only seen South American Protosses play PvZ on this map. Uh, you know, we saw NDA, we saw um, who was the Protoss before that, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, but we've only seen, oh, Dark. Um, we've seen them all open with the Forge expand. And again, you know, this is something I was mentioning last broadcast. I feel like Forge Expand, not a bad idea on this map because 973 is just not as uh, prevalent. With that positioning of the pylon, looks like, you know, he wants to go for the gate forge wall off. So, and with the early scout, it, it is looking like a Forge Expand here. So Ghost of Dark also going for the Forge Expand, which I think Striker will be happy to see. I mean, Striker is the type of player that he just wants to play a nice, calm, relaxing macro game where he can just hit his build order. And his build orders are probably the best outside of Korea. I mean, Striker, I think, has the best knowledge of, like, just build order-wise of uh, all Zerg players outside of Korea. He can hit some sick supplies. He knows when to get what. He studies a lot of games. Looks like a pro here from Ghost of Dark is gonna trade with the drone. Oh my god, that was so close, Striker. I I'm telling you, he was uh, he was sweating there, man. Because if that drone goes down, uh, that that is such a huge loss for Zerg. But also, if the pro goes down, that's a huge loss, especially if you're going something like Forge Expand. Now, basically, Ghost of Dark has zero. Um, scouting information though he did see that it is going to be a over pool now on these vertical spawns the rush distance is so short that i actually think it makes sense for ghost to dark you know generally you can go for that 13 nexus against over pool but in these positions it is wise to just get the cannon first because it's very possible that had ghost to dark went for the nexus the Zerglings could have been there in time to kill the first cannon. Now, Striker generally, again, he is very passive in this sense. He doesn't tend to go for quick kills. So him opening two lings like this makes a lot of sense uh, to me. Because I, I have seen him play a lot. And, uh, you know, Ghost Star is going to be feeling pretty good in that he's scouting here. You know, the, the thing with... Okay, actually, hold that thought. I was going to say, with two lings, it's pretty hard to reliably kill the pro but uh he did actually so that was huge now ghost of dark is playing in the dark and i know i keep saying 973 is not really you know hydras are not that much of a threat on this map but they i mean they still are uh you know recalling queen versus mini uh, in asl semifinals. by the way guys the finals was amazing make sure to watch it if you haven't but i I remember watching Queen actually going for a Hydra bus, but that was following up like a five pool. It was kind of a clowny game, uh, but uh, the Hydra bus did come in and you can still kind of go all the way around. Though, because it is striker and because it is like a best of one tournament setting where I think he should feel like he's a bit of a favorite against Ghost of Dark, I don't think he's gonna take those types of risks. Instead, he's gonna play ultra defensively and that's really good for Ghost of Dark, because despite losing those two probes early on, he's still on just one cannon. Uh, just one cannon core. That's actually so risky. He could have died to so many things, could have died to laying all in, especially with this uh, wall off, actually. The forge is out in front, and like when, the, when one building sticks out, you can kind of mass ling all in it uh, and just kill the building and run in. So a lot of weaknesses here for Ghost of Dark. Maybe he's playing the, the player, you know, he knows he's playing Striker. Striker, of course, he just loves his drones, man. He is kind of the modern drone man. Looks like he is just making drones. Ghost of Dark, of course, has a Citadel coming as well. 
And uh, yeah, second cannon in time here for possible Hydras, possible 973. But Ghost of Dark not playing overly greedy. But yeah, this is going to be kind of a, a build up phase. Yeah. In, in these positions, I was going to mention last game. Uh, you know, when the when Zer when any player expands vertically on this map, it's quite hard to kind of play defensively. But when you're expanding horizontally, I think it's uh, a bit easier to just have a slow game. Um, you know, because Striker just starts building bases to the towards the top left, and Protoss does the same. It's kind of really hard to attack. Uh, you can use the back path to position your units and intercept at the ramps. Both players can. So I'm expecting to see a really long game. Striker is just playing super, super, super standard. Five hatch, hydrogen evo chamber, second gas. This is as standard as it gets. Uh, you get the overlord speed, you get plus one weapons on your hydralisk, get the hydralisk upgrades, and Protoss actually not going for plus one air weapons and wow that robotics is actually really really fast what off of two gateways huh he does have the templar archives so this to me is looking like a fast dt drop which i mean oh so it does uh does striker have a spire he has a spire right does he have a he doesn't have a spire so that's actually really interesting. I didn't notice that. Striker went for a really fast lair, but no spire. So prioritizing his economy, prioritizing getting the hatchery count up first. And Ghost of Dark, recognizing that, is stopping his Corsair production. And he's going for a really fast uh, DT drop. So I actually really like this from Ghost of Dark. And, you know, without the spire, basically, Ghost of Dark can kind of clear any forward scouting overlords like you saw on mid right i don't think there's anything maybe there's an overlord spawning at mid right um oh no that's a link so okay striker kind of knows it's a possibility here so both players playing really well uh but this dt drop is it going to be four dts he has two dts out on the map i think he's bringing them back uh, he has two d yeah well we'll have to see actually this is really interesting look at striker's supply man this is this is one thing I'm telling you guys. His uh, his builds are just so clean. If Protoss does not have like a really strong build order, they can get overtaken in supply quickly. And for Zerg to be already even in supply, I mean, I know Ghost of Dark is going for this more tech heavy line uh, where he got his robotics and his Templar archives really early. He got four cannons here. Um, I think but... I am back, Gypsy. Oh, can you're you back again. again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Welcome back. Dude. I'm glad you <laughs> I'm survived. I'm sorry, my, right, my little son decided to unplug the router and uh, it wouldn't come back to life. So regular uh, regular events at, uh, casting yeah, cool. at that time hour. But I can see the game has developed already eight minutes in. I mean, there is a big DT drop and it's so far unspotted. What's going to happen here? Well, yeah, I mean, this is four DTs too, but it looks like Striker already has Overlord speed. And these DTs are not going straight for the mineral line. So luckily for Striker, I don't think he's going to lose too many drones. Uh, we'll have to see here. I mean, these DTs are only targeting the Hydras. Corsairs are going to try and shoot down these Overlords, but I think there's so many Hydralists here that not they're going to clean wow. everything up. Yeah. Huge win for the Zerg. If this happens to me and I'm playing Zerg, I'm feeling like, yeah, all right, let's add the third gas, let's add a fourth base, let's add 15 drones, <laughs> kind of like concept, right? It's, it's, yeah. uh, it's a big win, it's a big win. Um, but this game, um, I have not followed from the beginning, but it looks uh, quite sound other than that. No 973 uh, on, the, on that beautiful defensive map, seems like. No, actually, Striker went for a really standard build. Uh, he went five hatch lair, but he skipped the spire actually. So that was interesting. And I think mm -hmm. Ghost of Dark, he saw that there was no spire and he went for that DT drop, but it didn't pan out. So, and now, I mean, look at that. Oh my God, Zerg's on seven hatch already. This is what I've been trying to, to tell the the viewers is Striker, his, his build orders are on point. Like if you want to learn build, because this guy, he's always, Stu he, he gets coached by some of the Korean players. He studies a lot of the VODs. He studies like Soma. Uh, this guy knows his build orders. And look at the supply. I mean, 
If you're Protoss, yeah. you're not feeling good here. Yeah, for the fans, Protoss, he's getting his uh, third base already uh, up and running, so this is pretty early, considering current meta game. He's uh, in, a, in a very defensive position, but also Striker is not really falling for that, right? He's, he's yeah. getting four base. I think there's another uh, shuttle coming in. Yeah, and this time I bet it's uh, some kind of a storm drop. Uh, especially on this position, this could be very ugly, in fact. Is this a DT? Or is oh, it Zelox? Okay, so uh, going for some uh, extra harassment here, but uh, well, this could actually catch Striker a little bit of guard. Uh, you know, four Hydras here, if you use Zelox for attack, and they'll hold his armies in the middle of the map, so very annoying to deal with. Very annoying to deal with. He's gonna get by a lot of time, but there's a big attack on the third base, so some uh, some commitment here. But again, I feel these bases, may, uh, sorry, natural and third base, they are so close together, that yeah. they may be able, you know, it, it's very easy to move army around, and so many drones are dying. Yeah. 105 supply. <laughs> okay, so this uh, this shows only uh, you know part of the picture. That well, the the thing about losing oh does he have no he doesn't have draw. The thing about losing this many drones at this stage of the game is that Zerg doesn't really care. He has seven hatcheries. He can just rebuild them right away. So, you know when you do this sure. type of damage as Protoss, you kind of want to do it a bit earlier in the game before Zerg gets their infrastructure up. Because look at that, man. He just doesn't care. He lost. He actually lost quite a lot of drones yeah. at his main. But look, they're already built back. And Protoss instead, the, the one thing about Ghost of Dark's build here is that he just has so many cannons. I think he he's only on four gateways. And that's a big, big problem. And that's why he's lagging so much behind in supply. Yeah, very, um, I mean, heads off to Striker for recognizing that uh, Protoss went for this defense harassment style. Mm -hmm. And obviously he held well the Forge 4 DT shuttle drop. And from there he said, okay, you know, no problem. I'm just going to make 60, 65 drones uh, and have an explosive economy. I mean, you can go 10, 12 hatches of that, whatever you like. You can yeah. go free Evos. Uh, and, you know, if you get into late game as well, into your five, six bases, triple Evo, you know, plenty of everything. You're, you're almost impossible, invincible. I mean, Protoss needs to find some kind of an opening before that happens, because uh, Zerg scales up really, really well yeah. when you get to that tire-free, high upgrade play kind of situation. But yeah. before that, you know, that's where Protoss can, can do something. But right now, Ghost of Dark, other than this DT, which is great, but again, I mean, if this drone's attack move, this uh, this uh, DT will be gone in a second. There are so many of them. Striker doesn't even see it, but uh, yeah. it doesn't even hurt that much. You know, uh, conceptually, what's interesting here is, uh, I mean, this DT is killing so many drones, but just because Striker's playing the way that he's playing, it's like a counter to harassment style. Like when you're <laughs> yeah. over droning like that, you almost want your opponent to invest in harassment because you you don't care. Yeah. You know, actually, like um, they had this uh, AI for StarCraft Two, right? I forget whatever it's called, S, like the deep AI or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and Alpha Star, it, Alpha it, Star, I think. Yeah, yeah, Alpha Star, and uh, the me like the the meta that the AI developed was to just overmake workers because everyone on ladder was playing this super harassment style, and no one really understood like why are you oversaturating your bases, and especially in StarCraft Two because it's like. Uh, you can see the the, the the worker count, so yeah. I feel like it's the Don't. same situation here. And Ghost of Dark, right. trying to push out to take a fourth base, but just look at the supply, man. Yeah, and I, and I think that's the right choice, to be honest. I, I don't think Ghost of Dark can, can be aggressive. Again, not on this map for sure. And yeah. Maybe he's going to go on a map, but again, what then what? He gets counterattacked, or or his army gets gets smashed, and there is no recovery from this. So, so going for that, uh, um, for the fourth base, is, is a good idea. Again, Striker, despite having a magnitude of drones and a lot of army, a lot of supply, still on one able, his hive only now started. Yeah. You know, if you as Protoss can get to like six, eight high Templars, yeah. each high Templar, two storms, Hydra Lurker just stops being a threat. You can just brute force yeah. through any position, right? If you have that that big fall of death. And I don't think Ghost of Dark is yet there. He's moving out on the map, and you can see the flag from three sides from Striker. I don't drive to the bottom, but storms are on, on point here. Although this is just pure Dragoon. I mean, this is not going to trade well. Although still remaining storms, he has to be yeah, throwing each of them accurately. And that, I think, this is actually a very good trade for Ghost of Dark. Look at the supply. And because this fight is happening in the middle of nowhere, uh, neither party can really reinforce this position easily. So I actually think very good cost efficiency. Now fourth base from Ghost of Dark. Oh I mean, God. you see, yeah. I think we have uh, another comeback game here. <laughs> but yeah. this one looks real. Oh no, uh, the girls are gonna go now. Oh no. 
It was, I mean, that was really good for Ghost of Dark, and I was looking at that, the the one thing for Ghost of Dark is that he actually has no armor upgrades, and these days you really want those armor upgrades early on, but he does have two Forge behind this, so that was a really good trade, taking this fourth base, if he can hold on to this fourth base, I mean, look at Striker's side of the map. I think he can. Yeah. And, I mean, Striker's base has so many base. cannons. And like you mentioned earlier, his Hive tech is a bit late, and the, the other part is... You know, you have to have that switch in your approach, right? Like, Striker was dominating this game. He had a full contain outside of Protoss' base. And he, you know, in his mind, the plan hopefully was, I'm going to just make a lot of units and hopefully Zuri, or Protoss just suicides into me. But all of, them, all of a sudden, he has to play a long macro game. You know, because yeah. Protoss has his fourth base, then Protoss realistically can expand a bottom left. So Striker has to think, damn, I didn't just win this game. I have to keep playing. Yeah, and that was good decision making by Ghost Dark. I mean, horrible opening, but look at this. A lot of Hydra streaming into that position, but I think Ghost Dark is ready. I mean, the Steel Ops, even though not upgraded, they trade pretty well versus, you know, small groups of Hydra. And now Ghost Dark, actually, I think he made a point. No, you're not moving me away from that position. Yeah. I will take my fourth base. I'll be the one putting the pressure. I'll keep my army in the middle of the map. You have to go back to your base and put some defense. So a huge swing of momentum coming here. Uh, the Lurkers are not touched yet. I think Ghost of Dark needs to be careful though. I mean, he shouldn't overextend again. I mean, he feels that, you know, he kills so many units, but we can't forget how many hatches, how many drone strike has. He's gonna be real quickly. Look at this. These Lurkers are not yet there. Uh, these Zealots are doing a great job stalling some additional Hydra. The Storms are gonna be crucial. If you can land those, very good micro. The Lurkers are Oh, he's the burrowing them in the storm! Oh, but that was a fat Lurker spine. Do you saw those spines? They just evaporated like four <laughs> Dragoons. <laughs> But is it going to yeah. be enough? I mean, look at the mini-map. There's so much pink coming across the map. I think Ghost of Dark's done it, man. I think so, too. And this is, again, the same situation with Siki. Zerg needs a critical amount of units. Yeah. If you have six Hydras, you can't fight six Zillots. If you have 20 Hydras, you can't find 20 Zillots. You put them in a good position, you know, the range, up, the, the range attack is, uh, just, is better than melee attack. But yeah. this is exactly that situation. If you don't have enough units, you can't even approach Proto's army, right? It's just gonna completely steer you apart, and this is what we see now with that four phase down. It seems like there's no plan B for Striker. Yeah, uh, this is heartbreaking to watch because he was in the most dominating position, and I think he probably got complacent, you know, and started, you know, when when that Ghost Dark's army went to mid left and to the middle of the map. Striker was like, you know what, I'm winning so hard, I'm just gonna box and move all my units, but Ghost of Dark just had such a good position that he traded so efficiently, yeah. and it just snowballed from there, because he had, he, you know, the whole game he was lagging in supply because he was on 4 gate, but by the time he had his army in the middle of the map, he was on like 10 gate and double forge, so now it's just unrecoverable for Zerg, honestly, I mean, this is looking yeah, really bad. Again. This supply 80, uh, 83, 84. I mean, this is uh, this is at least 50 plus drones. I feel. Yeah. I mean, he is so heavily sun rated. Oh, huge storm again. No lurkers even. Another very big storm. I mean, this this hydras. I mean, maybe to butter uh, at this point for the zealots. Uh, I don't think. Yeah, I think we're gonna see GG any minute. Uh, Ghost Dark even sending a quite a sizable army top left, yeah. uh, expecting a base there. But uh, but this is basically all the striker has to. Uh, to work with in here, and I mean, yeah, exactly. Ghost Darks maybe even uh, thinking himself, what am I missing here? Why, yeah. <laughs> why is he still in the game with, with you know all that army that I have? And, and, and uh, he's probably right; he's not missing anything. He's even adding extra extra cannons, maybe anticipating a swarm counter attack or something like that. Oh, so many Zillas and Archers and High Templars. This, is, I think, this is gonna be nailed to the coffin. To be honest, this next attack is uh, is not something that Striker can hold on. No, definitely not. And honest, honestly, I feel like Revolver, it, it's a tricky map because, again, it's just so defensive. Uh, on most maps, like if this was Fighting Spirit, if this was, I don't know, like Sylphid, if this was like, I don't know, even Good Knight, uh, when you have an advantage the size that Striker did, he can just barrel it down right. and kill the third right. base or do whatever. But on Revolver, you can just stall the game out and play defensively. And I mean, still, the, the person with an advantage should still be able to get into late game with an advantage, but you just can't instantly win. And I feel like Striker just didn't have that uh, foresight, you know, to just slow down a bit and, and secure his side of the map. And now Ghost of Dark with the killing move. Oh, that's so many zealots, though. <laughs> no. Like, 
No, no guns, but I still yeah. think it's enough, right? So if, if you start the lurker, it's still oh, they will smile. And, and it's a good point of fight, it goes straight to the base. Make mm -hmm. Zerg or Morrow. Uh, the pattern we see here, Gypsy, is for sure that the, the attacking party on this map yeah. didn't have that much success. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. see the same with Siki and his counter attacks. Yeah. Uh, similarly, overextended from the Pretty okay. Uh, very similar strike. He went down with a lot of units. He didn't know where to go back. And and uh, yeah, that's what we see here. I mean, there's there's uh, you know 30 zillas running in your base. That's what you get overextending your attack. Yeah, and I think Striker. He's gonna he's gonna play it out. I mean, it is a tournament game. You, you don't want to leave prematurely. I think sometimes the players also like they know it's a tournament game and that there's an audience. You know, you don't want to just like leave the game when it's not clearly clearly over. But right. you know, and maybe he's trying to get some of his jitters out as well. But yeah, I mean, this is goes to dark. He's playing this beautifully now. He's taking expansions behind this, adding cannons as well. So he's not gonna run out of money. And Striker, the problem is that he lost a lot of his production, you know, a lot of hatcheries died, so it's not like he can make a bunch of drones. He has to catch That's... up in infrastructure now. Yeah, true, true. And, and again, uh, I think he's pure Hydro Man, uh, Lurker Hydro for sake, uh, despite being in, uh, in high uh, tier 3 yep. now, I mean, he can't really make use of it because he does deserve it out there full way. So, oh, very nice pitch, very nice pitch. Actually, almost equalizes the supply but we know for a fact that the uh, supply is not showing uh, even half of the show in this game because we have yeah. uh, five a five base fully operational us with upgrades with poly infrastructure and defense everywhere versus a zerg that is mined out in his main and his natural is rebuilding his third base and has got you know a very fresh fourth base that is completely exposed to harassment so i believe uh, well i'm still surprised i was saying that the previous yeah. pack was the one to conclude the game Again, supplies are getting uh, suspiciously close, as we've seen in uh, Oya versus the uh, <laughs> versus the uh, uh, Siki game. Uh, but again, I mean, look at this. Striker is overextending again. Half of his army is in one round. No, odds. half of army is on the other one. Well, there's no observer. Okay, but there are so many high templars. You can storm lines of lurkers. Even he doesn't even need to uh, <laughs> storm, uh, storm the lurkers. I mean, dude, Koget. Uh, you know, this is this is why, by the way, I have a uh, that bingo card i don't know if you've seen it but you know i tend to say oh the game's over the game's over uh but it's bsl man and i feel like in bsl anything can happen and it is happening right now because strikers equalize the supply and ghost of dark yeah i mean he has five bases but his mains mind out his naturals mind out and the probes that he transferred from both his main and his natural just got picked off so he is gonna have to rebuild them and rebuilding the probes means zerg has time to rebuild a couple of his hatcheries now again looking at this objectively protoss should be in a good spot but you know the execution is tricky sometimes you forget an obs an obs gets sniped lurkers get spines off in defensive positions i mean i hope this time around striker actually builds a nidus so that's that's one thing you, know, you really need a nidus on this map so Gypsy, I uh, I see your point. Uh, the problem <laughs> is initiative here. Uh, Zerg has got no initiative at all. So yeah. his uh, fake uh, contains. I mean, it's uh, it's like stepping on a minefield. You know, uh, if, if you contain and actually for the army goes there, uh, they're gonna crash. I think the problem here is that Striker has got to both build an economy and keep on making units. While yeah. Gosudar yeah. has got five thousand cannons. There is no threat. He can just focus on making units. And I think yeah. we already see him again. Uh, okay, also using some harassment also fine so so i i agree in theory i think what striker should do now is uh avoid those positions it's there's yeah. no point for him to be on a map i mean you can't be aggressive uh, anymore so just go home touch you know just forget about the storms get a night as you said get a lot of lurkers and try to you know create some kind of very tricky sunken spore uh lurker positions with uh, scourge everywhere until the point you can go full, uh, you know, crackling, kind of like crackling the father yeah. um, swarm, which is basically the, the obsolete competition, I think. Yeah. Absol absolutely, yeah, the best one, right? Oh, you can see this, but will he see it? Shallow grazing the left side there. Um, barely in Striker's vision, but it was. Yeah. He, he probably didn't notice that. And... No, he did not. And this uh, freshly made drones. Is it a oh. storm drop, though? Right. Oh, there's four Templars in it. Four okay. High Templars. Okay, <laughs> wow, all right. 
well, he's enjoying his time uh, flying with this uh, <laughs> shuttle, kind of like, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Uh, well, could have also done it at the other back. I actually yeah, wonder if this, this striker even have a spire because he, he never built a spire this game. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that's no. unfortunate. Yeah, that's... Okay, and this is one of those. Um, as soon as Storm lands, this campaign is gone. And it may feel like you're achieving something at Zerg, you're uh, getting to search with Travel Observer, but realistically, even if you trade it you know, equally with Protoss, this is uh, putting in a back to here. Uh, yeah, I mean the Protoss army is huge, and the, the the problem is he lost so many drones there. He's gonna have to, as you mentioned, Kogan. He has to make both units and workers, and losing yeah. all those drones. It looked for a second he had good saturation, but now he has to rebuild it. And well, does he have time? Another no, time. Protoss, yeah. <laughs> I had flashbacks from Oya versus Siki. That position here, there's no river, but couple high templars. If they have storm, they have One storm. Four. So actually. Oh, no. but a lot of Zerg is kind of okay, he will be able to cleanse again, very nice, but again, supply of sorry. And once again, uh, Striker currently at one mining base, uh, yeah. he's gonna transfer the drones, that's great. Uh, but yet again, the problem with Zerg is, you need some critical mass. It's same with ZVT, yeah. same in ZDP. Zerg is very vulnerable when it's small, yeah. but when it's getting big, it's getting literally invincible. That's uh, yeah. that's what we see with Zerg, and and with this low scale number, twelve things here, a couple goes here, and so on. So you're never picking up an initiative. You're never picking up the momentum. You have to yeah. be on the offense with Zerg. You have to be able to generate threats and macro at the same time. Um, yeah. And this is not what we're seeing, and and we understand why we're not seeing this. But it, it it could be a point of no return, which we've seen a couple of of those already in that game. You're right, Gypsy. Yeah. Um, I, I, no, I mean I totally agree with you, uh, but I will say this. Um, sometimes, I mean, Ghost of Dark, <laughs> I, I feel like, you know, Protosses, sometimes they just need to be a bit more just calm about moving their units together and have a plan. Like, you're not going to, but on this map, you're not going to bust the natural generally, but you are going to bust those, the, those natural third bases, right? Like where there's a the big ramp. That's where you should be attacking with all your units. Instead, we've seen Protosses constantly try and force up that small ramp with the double egg there. Not be too successful. It looks like this attack, though, it is massive. He has two yeah. observers. They don't have upgrades, though. That's one thing. Yeah. I feel like Protosses needs to start getting the, at least the speed upgrades. But it's more than enough. I feel like his upgrades are 3, 2, 1. Zerg is lagging in upgrades because, you know, Zerg's been lagging in economy for a while. And Striker GG, oh, GG. Ghost of Dark takes it.